Hi, I'm Kent. In this video, I'm going to talk about some tips and tricks for using Shapecast. In the last video, I went ahead and launched Shapecast. This is the software I've been working on to go ahead and automatically create molds for me. And I wanted to share it with you guys. So the idea is you can take a sketch of the profile of the pot. It then does all the work to do the 3D modeling to create 3D printed molds for plaster that can then be used to slip cast pots. So as a quick example, here is the outline profile of a pot that can then be used to create a plaster mold like this. It has that profile. And then here's the final fired pot. So this profile here is exactly the profile of the pot. The software has been working well so far. I found a few bugs with the 3D rendering itself and I think I fixed those. Some of the other failures I've seen are basically around creating SVGs that are somehow broken and the software doesn't know how to deal with it. In this video, I'm gonna show you a little bit about how Shapecast works so that if you encounter an error, hopefully you can debug it and figure out what's going on. So for Shapecast, I want you to draw the final profile exactly to size. There's a setting that goes ahead and scales everything up to account for your clay shrinkage. So you'll notice if I put this in here, it's shrunk a lot. And that's all done automatically based upon the clay shrinkage. And then the other thing it does is it adds the slip well. So those are two modifications to the curve it does right away. So it will go and add the slip well on like this. So don't draw the slip well. It does that for you. I've seen a few errors where it seemed like people drew the slip well on. The other thing it does is it needs to find the axis of rotation. So we are doing a mirror around the middle here. And so it finds the leftmost point. And that's the axis that will mirror everything around. So it doesn't really matter where you draw it on the page. It goes and finds that, that point. But that also means if you're expecting the edge of the page to be the center of the pot, that won't work because it just gets scooched over. So if you want a bottom of your pot, you need to draw it in. Likewise, don't draw the top of your pot in. If you drew the top of your pot in, there would be no pot. You don't want this closed off. So I've added a few checks for some of the more common errors. So one of the things is it's looking for this middle point here. So there needs to be a point that is leftmost on the end of the line. If one of the ends isn't leftmost, it'll say something's broken. Likewise, there needs to be one at the top right. If there's not one at the top right, that means there's some sort of undercut or some other weird geometry going on. It, I couldn't add the slip well on if this isn't the top right. Just a couple other quick notes. Uh, Shapecast, one of the first things it does is it goes ahead and turns the fill off and makes the line really, really small. If you're having problems, I recommend doing the same thing. It can show some errors that are otherwise hidden. And I'll jump in the computer in a little bit and I'll show some of those to you. So most of Shapecast is really about creating offsets. So we need an offset from this line to the inside to create the piece for the 3D print. The plaster itself is an offset from the outside of the line. If you're using the outer mold system, then there's an offset from that and so on. So there's dozens and dozens of lines that get generated under the hood and almost all of them are offsets from some basic geometry that we have here. So the lines you're drawing are basically instructions to the computer to do the modeling. And if those lines are somehow wrong, it will try and follow along and that can create some failures. Basically it can violate some assumptions that I'm using or it can create geometry that's just impossible. So how do you do the offset? Well, it turns out that's actually one of the harder things of doing this. You can imagine, for instance, drawing a perpendicular line at every point. However, here where it curves a little bit, we'd have lines crossing over. So if we had one perpendicular here, going out to represent the plaster and another one here, well, those just crossed over each other. And in general, that's a bad idea. There's an algorithm out there that basically the idea is that you roll a circle around the outside edge and you draw a line at the farther out point. And so when it hits something like the foot here, it's gonna to touch on multiple points and that can help us with dealing with these intersection lines. So basically what the software does is it goes along, I'm not gonna bother rolling it. Turn around here, see if I can do this left-handed all the way around. And we get up here to the foot it goes out and around like that. So this here represents the plaster if we're using my outer mold. Basically the same thing happens on the inside, but that's smaller, so it's a little bit harder to see and draw. So we need to do this offset, and to do so, it follows this line just like I showed you. One other quick note, if you're using the outer mold, the other thing it tries to do is it tries and fill this in a little bit like that so that you can 3D print the outer shell without having supports. If that doesn't work, it goes ahead and just uses the regular curve. 
for instance, the slope here is to, trying to fill it in. This goes around to the outside here, just like that. It cuts a hole in the bottom so you can pour the plaster in. I created this new little cup recently and it's got this kind of scalloped bottom here. And you can see how that gets projected out. So there's this little, little, weird little funky thing and it really is a projection of this line out using this type of algorithm. The other thing is I'm looking for exactly one line here. If there's more than one line, things will fail. Or if there's no lines at all, it will also fail. You might say no lines at all is a little silly. Well, I've actually seen a few SVGs with images embedded in them. The SVG format's happy to embed images, so it might look like a line is there to you, but there really isn't one, not in the way I'm expecting. To get down in the weeds a little bit, I'm looking for a single SVG path. So with this idea in mind, that should basically represent a lot of the errors that we're gonna cover. So make sure you have one point in the middle, one point is the lip of the pot. Make sure there's only one line. And then that one line describes the profile of the pot. So let me draw a few examples. So what if we didn't end in the middle? Well, the pot's gonna fail, but like if we curved around like this, it will go and then add the slip well on up over here. And like I showed you with the quarter, it's gonna draw the line around the outside edge here. But as we go over this way, it will wrap around and basically stop there. So now it thinks the plaster needs to be there. And that's impossible because this here is all the inside of the pot. It's gonna be a mirror image of that. And so it doesn't know what to do with this piece. Kind of similar problem on the other side. So if we draw, go around and we go up and say we curved in, maybe you wanna try and represent the lip or something like that, or it's just an error. Well, one, it's going to fail because the slip well always goes out and then up. So now we have a self-intersecting line, which is bad. And then again, we'll take our quarter and we'll follow the line around. It goes around like this and then it goes around like this and then it goes around like this. Continues. Like that. And so now it thinks all of this is plaster. And we got a little hole here that's not. And the plaster can't in intersect with itself. The same problem exactly happens with the 3D print on the inside to represent the inner form. You would try and put 3D print on the inside. It does the same little trick. And now we have a self-intersecting line and that fails. So that's part of the reason why I need those points on the edge. I saw a few that were basically a line that went like this and then kind of looped around like that and then like that. And for exactly the same reason that it's going to fail, it's going to try and put stuff on the outside and it goes around all the way like this and then it continues on. So now there's self-intersection and it puts plaster on the inside or likewise, it puts the 3D print on the outside in the wrong spot. So that'll fail. The problem is sometimes that is hidden. So I've also seen a couple others where it looked like it was probably hand-drawn and the line itself was a little jittery. And that's not a problem in and of itself. You might get some undercuts or the geometry isn't wrong, but like if you zoomed in to one of these areas here, so if we draw that big, what you actually saw on the line was something kind of like this, for instance, where it looped back around on itself. And this creates exactly the same problem, where if we're trying to project out from the side, doing this offset thing here, it's gonna fail. And that, that'll, that'll die on us. So you don't wanna draw things like this, but sometimes it's done unintentionally and either the width of the line or the fill of the line is obscuring that. So you don't wanna draw things that look like this intentionally. Sometimes they happen unintentionally and I'll show you some examples in the computer how that works. The last one I've seen is basically some pots that look kind of like this. So I think the idea is that the intention is to have a line down the middle, but the software that was being used for some reason drew a closed shape on the outside. And again, the quarter trick will explain why this is a problem. So it goes along here, that's fine, around the outside. Then it'll try and go around the top and around the inside and around the inside and around the inside, all the way around. And so it's went ahead and created an offset because the outside of the line is the outside of the line. The software doesn't know the difference and it will fail. And again, this one's usually hidden. I think the only other problems I've really seen is the pot being mirrored. So 
it's basically looking to put plaster over here on this side. So if you draw the pot this way, or if you draw the pot this way, it's going to break. Again, it's looking for the leftmost point, and that will be the axis of rotation. So it'll find it here, and it'll try and flip it around. So this is going to do weird things. I actually have a check in there now, so there's not a point on this line here, so it, it will fail. So go ahead and draw it the same way I have in the gallery. Likewise, this one's going to fail because this, adding the slip well will do weird things. The top of your pot's enclosed, etc. So it basically is violating a bunch of the assumptions that are needed in order to go and create the geometry. So go ahead and draw it in that direction. So let's go ahead and jump into the computer and I can show you some of those tricks to find those hidden errors. So here's the editor that I use. This is Inkscape. I did a really quick tutorial in my last video on this. There's a ton of tutorials out there on YouTube and other places, so I'm not going to do too much of a deep dive. Hopefully just enough to show you what you need to know. And if you use a different editor, there should be similar ideas. So here's an example I just drew up. It looks like it's one line. It kind of goes around. You can imagine doing the quarter thing around the outside and creating the offsets that we need, or likewise around the inside, and the offsets would do what we need. But this will fail. So if we go in, and I have the fill and stroke here. So if we go to the fill, we want to make sure the fill is turned off, because that will hide things. And then the stroke width, it's, I recommend going ahead and setting this something small, at least for testing. I often will have it bigger when I'm drawing, but like when I really want to make sure that's working, I'll put it something small. So I'll put it like 0.1 millimeters. And now, I can zoom in. You can see this line's doing all these weird things here. So it's a self-intersecting line, and this will fail. You'll also note that I have the XML editor here. On a Mac, this is under Edit and XML Editor. This is a representation of the underlying file. One of the things you'll want to be on the lookout is that there is a single path here, so SVG path doesn't matter what it's called, but you don't want other things showing up here. So if you had an image, it would not be a path. Or if you had a bunch of different paths, a bunch of different lines, you'd see probably a bunch of different path elements. Shapecast is assuming just one of these. All right, so there's one example of a hidden error. So here is one that I just drew by hand, and you can see it's a little bit wobbly, and this might create some undercuts. And it's only one path, so that's good. However, the trick I just showed you with a fat line, that might give you a hint. So if we go over here to the stroke, width and make it something small. In general, it's looking pretty good. However, there's a little bit of weirdness down here. So if we zoom in to the bottom left, we can see that there's this part where I started and often you'll see this in a stroke. There's another one up here actually. So ignore the wiggles, but you can see here that it looks like maybe this is a problem. Looks like it's probably self-intersecting so we can make the line even smaller. And yep, there's a, there's a loop right there. The other way we can do it is we can go to the node editor and you can see there's a bunch of different nodes. Sometimes that will help you see some of the points that you wouldn't otherwise be able to see. So yeah, this, this will fail. Again, hand drawing is just fine. You just need to make sure that you don't wind up with these errors in the lines that you're creating. And again, those are often obscured because of the thickness of the line, right? So when we zoom back all the way out to something that's more reasonable to be looking at, you might be able to tell there's something weird going down here, but you probably wouldn't see that error up there. All right, so here's one. It looks like it's doing good. So we have the leftmost point that's going to be the middle. We have an upper right one. It doesn't look like it's intersecting itself. Let's go ahead and double check. So we're going to the stroke paint, and well, actually the stroke paint is off right now. Uh, we can turn it on and make it something small. Again, like 0.1 millimeters, and it's changing the size, but you know, it, it looks like it's okay. But why is the line that thick if the stroke width is only 0.1 millimeters? Well, the trick is over here on the fill. So if we turn the fill off, we'll see that this is actually a hollow line. It's this one line that wraps all around. So that was the error I showed you on paper where it looks like it's one line, but it actually is a continuous loop and that will fail to process because of the offsets just breaking. So this idea of understanding the offsets and how Shapecast is creating them is basically key into trying to diagnose some of these errors. The software will basically encounter them, it will wind up with some self-intersecting geometry and just fail. And it doesn't really know what you intended, it only knows what you gave it, and so it can't really fix those problems either. All right, and one more quick example. So again, this looks like it's okay. Let's go ahead and make the line. We can go over to the fill. There is no fill. I'm sure we need to highlight it. So there is no fill. The stroke style, we can set something small. Still looking okay, but if we go over here to the XML editor, you'll actually see there's four different paths. So these are four different lines that are not joined. And Shapecast will also break on that. It needs one continuous line. 
I think that covers most of the errors I've seen with the SVGs themselves, with one big exception, and that's units. Since we're going to go ahead and 3D print this out, we need to go ahead and create the STLs, and therefore our units need to be correct, and if we get those wrong, the size is basically going to be wrong. I have the web preview there to give you a general sense of the shape. However, it's a separate piece of software than the one that's actually doing the processing on the server. And so it'll give you a sense of the shape, but there may be still some errors in the units that get passed through. And so the size and shape will be wrong. That's one of the reasons I'm creating the design proof. So you can actually go ahead and load that STL file into your slicer and make sure that it is actually the right shape. The biggest problem is where the software will go and you draw something that is say 100 millimeters wide, or you think it's 100 millimeters wide, but the software processes it as 10 millimeters wide. Because it's going and trying to create all these offsets, when it's really small, it can fail. And some of those are just inherent. It needs to go and create offsets that are big enough to work. So that's why the smaller units are actually failing. Well, one, it'll be the wrong size. It's not what you want. But the offset creation that I explained earlier actually fails in the software, and that prevents the 3D parts from being generated. So what I did was I updated the instructions a little bit, and now I actually have a link to this SVG template here. If you're having problems, go ahead and download that template file in your editor, draw a very simple pot, and then save it and upload it to Shapecast. Hopefully your editor will respect the settings and it will just work okay. From there, make sure you don't have any of these other errors. Check the line width and check the fill to make sure that there aren't any of these hidden errors that's gonna cause the offsets to fail. If both of those are true, then it should go ahead and create the 3D models that you need. I'll be on the lookout for some other errors, ones I'm not expecting, but that should have you covered for the most part. As I've discovered some of these errors, some of them are relatively easy to check, and so I've put in a few more error messages, some of them in the web preview. So if you load an SVG file that has some of these errors, it will give you an explanation that, hey, something's wrong. It may pass the web preview and go on to creating the design proof and fail there as well. There are a couple of error messages that come back from that that might give you hints and if it's just failing for some unknown reason, check the units, that's probably the problem. With those things in mind, you should be able to go ahead and draw some designs and push them all the way through Shapecast, and it should go ahead and create the 3D models for you. We've had a bunch of people do that, and I'm looking forward to hearing success stories from a bunch of the rest of you. This video is down in the weeds, and if you made it this far and are interested in using Shapecast, go ahead and sign up. I've been making my way through the waitlist, and the server has stayed up, so I'm continuing to add folks. And like always, if you have any questions or comments, do let me know. Thanks.